Hello, everyone! Welcome to episode number 568 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by yours truly, Amelia Dalton. How about some analog design to start off your Friday? Solera CEO Pat Brockett and Alberto Vivani, who is the COO of Solera, are joining me today to discuss the challenges of automating analog design, why there is a widespread need for custom analog chips, and how Solera is dramatically changing how analog chips are designed. Also this week, I check out new sound-powered sensors and how these new passive sound-sensitive sensors could save millions of batteries. But first, please welcome Pat and Alberto from Solera to Fish Fry. Hi, Pat. Thank you so much for joining me. It's a pleasure to be here. Looking forward to it. And hi, Alberto. Thank you for joining me. My pleasure. Nice to meet you, Amelia, and great to be here. Nice to meet both of you. All right. So first off, for my audience who may not know, what is Solera all about and what's your strategy? Solera is an analog company and it's really going to disrupt the entire analog marketplace. What we have done in the last four years since we've been founded is to take a very experienced group of analog designers They're as good as any analog designers anywhere in the world. And they have built an intelligent system to basically design analog chips. And what's amazing about this is we can tape out either a custom or standard analog chip in about less than two weeks. That changes the whole ballgame about how analog design is done. So the expert system has decades of analog design capability in it, and we use AI algorithms to literally put together whatever analog chip you would like designed in a little over a week. A strategy initially is to do fast turns designs for, at the moment, we're talking primarily to large OEM companies that have their own digital silicon capability but they don't have an analog capability. And as you know, really any system in the world needs some sort of analog power management interface, et cetera. So we're currently engaged with our first customers, supplying them with their specific needs of analog devices. So we'll be actually shipping chips. The next phase though will be as the platform matures, and becomes more capable, then we're actually going to install seats, as it were, in our customers' design labs so they can literally go ahead and design their own analog chips. So we're going to move from being a chip company, design services company, up into, I suppose, an EDA company. But an EDA company that will really automate and dramatically change time to market and the productivity of analog designers. That is incredible. Now, as we all know, automating analog design has proven to be very difficult. So what is Solera in particular doing differently? Well, we're not an EDA company. Basically, our roots are with some of the best analog designers in the world. And so we've approached this by taking all of their learning, building an expert system in such a way that we have a whole bunch of things we call nestos, which are the tiny elements that you need to build an analog product. And then using computer software, you can literally stick a specification in there And the intelligent machine, the AI machine, will go away and bolt that together in a chip and you can program it. One of the demonstrations we do for a customer is we actually change some analog function designs on the fly. Alberto, you might want to describe how that works. Yes. So our demo consists in designing back converter 
right on the spot in a few minutes and uh, building the layout automatically through our chip hub uh, system and then changing the characteristic of the step down converter to from high voltage low current to anything for example low voltage high current and we can show that the layout changes on the fly and uh, at the end of the 30 minutes demo we have two complete designs for back converters generated from the ground up totally automatically and that's literally done in a few minutes and as alberto mentioned there we don't just do the design the platform lays it out as well and it will also automatically generate most of the uh, test program. So this really is a complete analog engineering system. You guys touched upon this a little bit earlier, but what does the future for Solera look like? Will you continue as a chip company or a design services company? I think the answer to that is both. It's really customer's choice. If they want us to continue to do designs for them, we can do that. If they have their own capability, their own supply chain, and they just want to basically use us as a, uh, a software tool, then we'll license uh, seats to them. So we can be both. But the one thing that we're absolutely convinced of is that we will completely disrupt the existing analog business because we're getting rid of the bottleneck that's been there for 25, 30, I don't know, 50 years maybe, that this is designing analog chips required master craftsmen with very little automation. We have, for the first time, thoroughly automated the entire process. And our technology automation also opens the analog custom market to a much broader range of applications. We can now serve applications that before it will not make any economical sense for an analog company to serve. And this uh, creates a, a much broader SAM for us. So as we go forward, I think the analog business, the latest projection is sometime during this decade, you know, it's going to become a hundred billion dollar business. I can't see any particular area up to and including RF, why this tool can't be used to design chips. All we need to do is just bring the right process in and port it onto the machine. We're already talking to customers about chip companies about bringing their process in and they start designing chips on their own process using chip hub. So these are incredibly ambitious goals. I love it. But what do you think the impact will be? How widespread is the need for custom analog chips? It's pretty large, but remember, we're not just saying we're going to do custom analog chips. We can do any analog chip. So if you want to do a standard function or an ASSP that you want to put out as a standard application-specific product, you can do it on our platform. But you can also completely customize something. We're talking to customers already that have constraints in size, which of course includes packaging and layout and time to market and cost. The thing that I didn't mention that I should mention is there is no overhead for this automation. It really does replace the skills and the experience of a top-class analog designer and layout person. So you pay no penalty on die size or cost. Before this automation, a merchant semiconductor company could make a custom analog chip in something like 18 months. Unless you were Apple or somebody that was going to bring a huge amount of volume, people like the TIs and the ADIs of this world were very reluctant to do that because they could get much bigger ROI at less risk by doing some form of standard component. We can do custom designs in a week or so. So that changes the whole equation about when you can customize your own analog, which will absolutely revolutionize this market. Absolutely. I'm excited to see the future of analog chip design with you guys. So before I let you go, Alberto, it is time for your off-the-cuff question. Now, I know both of you are a bit foodies, so 
Alberto, if you could have one meal right now, it doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the world, you need a passport to get there, what would you have? Well, you know, I'm Italian, so I do come from the other side of the world and I have my passport with me. And uh, so I think I would probably go back to my origins and uh, I come from the land where uh, pesto was invited. So I would have a very nice plate of fusilli al pesto and uh, cooked with uh, homemade pesto, preferably hand ground. And I, of course, would have roast beef and Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> I love both of those answers. Yes, please. Well, Alberto and Pat, thank you so much for joining me. It was our pleasure. Thank you very much. Thanks, Amelia. Could sound sensors help us from drowning in batteries? Well, maybe not completely, but they may be able to help us make a dent in the overwhelming amount of battery waste that we will be dealing with in the next couple years. Sound sensor, you say? Yes, a new type of mechanical sensor has been developed by a team of researchers led by Mark Sara Garcia and ETH geophysics professor Johan Robertson. And its creators have already applied for a patent for their invention and have presented the principle in the journal advanced functional materials. So, Professor Johan Robertson explains the principle behind their invention like this. He says, the sensor works purely mechanically and doesn't require any external energy source. It simply utilizes the vibrational energy contained in sound waves. Okay, so when a specific word, noise, or tone is generated, the sound waves from these sounds cause the sensor to vibrate. And that vibration contains enough energy to generate a small electrical pulse, which can then switch on an electronic device that has been turned off. So this device can distinguish between words. For example, the sound energy produced by the word for will cause the sensor to vibrate and trigger the device to turn on. But the word three, which has much less sound energy, will not. And with that word, nothing happens. In the newest versions of this sensor, it has been able to distinguish between 12 different words, including on, off, up, and down. And the newer versions of this device are also smaller than the prototype, so now they're around the size of a thumbnail. And this team plans on making them even smaller. So, what makes this device so special? This sensor is known as a metamaterial, so it's not the material itself that gives the sensor its unique properties, it's the structure that does that. This sensor does not contain any rare earth materials or toxic heavy metals. It's completely made out of silicone and is made up of dozens of identical or similarly structured plates that are connected to each other via tiny bars. And those tiny bars, they act like springs, and they determine whether or not a particular sound source sets the sensor in motion. This team of researchers also used computer modeling and algorithms to develop the special design of these microstructured plates and how to best attach them to each other. So what kind of applications would these new sound-powered sensors be a good fit for? Well, for starters, this team is targeting building and earthquake monitoring and medical devices like cochlear implants. Mark Serra Garcia sees a bright future for these sensors. He no longer works at ETH, but at AMOLF, a public research institute in the Netherlands, where he and his team are refining these mechanical sensors. Their aim is to launch a solid prototype by 2027. He says, 
There's a great deal of interest in zero energy sensors in industry too. If we haven't managed to attract anyone's attention by then, we might found our own startup. <laughs> Super cool, right? So if you want even more information about these new sound sensors or Solera, I've included a couple links below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com and in the description for this week's YouTube episode as well. Also, make sure you subscribe to this here podcast on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or just about any other podcasting platform to listen to some exciting upcoming episodes. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into X, you can monitor our tweets at EE Journal TFM. And don't forget, if you would like to follow my personal account, check out Amelia D1978. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing, I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we're also now on Blue Sky Social and Mastodon too. And we have that YouTube channel I just mentioned, youtube.com slash EE Journal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series hosted by me. And of course, you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or heck you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of February 9th, 2024, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.